Right, you guys, got another video here for you. This is some cool tech from China in 2018. So I've got a bunch of products here for review. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification button to be notified when we get new videos up. Now, you can see here, this is the Ryan Mini Wireless Keypad. And uh, this is a touchpad combo. It's an X8 version. You can see it's good for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, Smart TV, and PS4. So it's compatible with all those. It's RGB, and this is everything you're going to get inside the box. So you've got your instruction manual here. It comes in a bunch of different languages, as you can see. We're interested in English, and that's pages one to four. It does have pictures and English text on there. Now, to set this up, it just tells you uh, to plug in your dongle, and basically that is it. It will then start to uh, pair. Now, you can see here we do have a thank you card and a warranty card here, which you can uh, use uh, to contact them if you need to. You've got your charging cable, which is USB charging cable, to charge up your keyboard. And you can see here you've got little QWERTY keyboard layout. And also you've got that little touchpad at the top. You've got a scrolling wheel here and a bunch of other buttons on here which means you can control the whole of your devices by using this one little touchpad. It's pretty awesome. And I mainly use mine for Android TV boxes and uh, mini uh, PCs and stuff like that. But you've got your touchpad there and your Qu QWERTY keyboard layout. Very easy to use. And uh, once you get used to using these, you'll never go back. And this means you only have to have uh, one actual uh, touchpad and keyboard here all in one. You've got your navigation uh, buttons there to navigate around very useful to have if you've got Android TV boxes and stuff like that. So you can see here, this is where the battery compartment is. And also you've got that little dongle in here. You just flick that out and basically plug that into any device that you want it to run on as long as it's USB and uh, you'll pretty much get yourself uh, this backlit RGB effect here. The very nice looking uh, type uh, touchpad. I do like it. It's very easy to use. And if you ever use one of these, you'll never go back to using that silly remote control. Next up, we have a handheld gaming console called RS1. It's pretty decent. It's pretty affordable as well. And it's got a bunch of classic games. It's £15.99, has a 2.5 inch LCD portable color screen. You've got your uh, cables here to plug into the device and also into a TV. If you want to play it on the big screen, you can do that by these cables here. It does have a user manual here to help you set it up, but it's pretty straightforward and easy to do. You just turn it on and away you go. You can see 320 by 240 RGB colors. You also you got 16 bit arcade uh, graphics, which is basically all your old uh, 16 bit and 8 bit sort of games you can play on this uh, little device. Very nice little device uh, for um, for young kids and stuff like that for long trips and on planes and stuff. Now this is a great little portable uh, classic retro game player, which will allow you to play all your retro games uh, when you're in the car on the plane or on holiday or something like that, you want to take something with you. You can see it's made of plastic. It's not the best build quality in the world, but it is a cheap product. You can see you've got your control buttons here, reset buttons and your speaker and stuff like that there. Also, you've got your battery bay on the back and another dial here, which is either brightness or volume, one of those two. Uh, the, the actual uh, user manual will tell you all these buttons, what they do. And also we do have a little uh, jack there where you can plug those cables in and plug it straight into the TV. And this is where you put your batteries in, pretty straightforward stuff. And you could use rechargeable batteries in here if you wanted to, uh, but they're pretty cheap nowadays. You can see it does have 152 games. So that's not too bad for that sort of price point. It's a very good uh, cheap device to have uh, to play all those retro games. And I'll show you a few of them here. You can go through the list here. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can see there's a bunch of them on the screen there, which you can play at your own leisure. Do uh, Double Dragon there, also Chipdale 2, Blood Fight, and you've also got Mario and all those games as well, which are pretty cool to play, as you can see here on the small screen. So pretty useful. Uh, if someone's never played these, this is Double Dragon, if you remember that. So a pretty decent game, as you can see, throwing people about, punching them, kicking them. And it's very easy to set up. You just click on these buttons and then away you go. In Kung Fu, F1 Race, 90 Tank, you can see 1942 World Cup. You can see a bunch of games on here. Donkey Kong, if you've never played Donkey Kong, this is a classic game, but you can play it all on here. And I've got other versions of Donkey Kong as well. Next up, we've got a toy drone here. This is the Cymar X5SW. 
It's 36 pounds and it does come with a two megapixel Wi-Fi camera on there, which isn't the best, but it is a pretty cheap at 36 pounds. As you can see, this is the specs. You can pause the screen and read it at your own leisure. Comes with a couple of batteries, takes about 120 minutes to charge. You'll get a little bit of flight time on there. And also the video recording is up to 30 minutes. You can see you've got um, 50 meters of distance of flying as well which away from the actual controller this is everything you're going to get inside the box you get all your user manual and your controller and also the actual drone itself you can see you get two batteries one is already installed in the drone itself and this is a spare one you can buy extra ones of these if you want to because the flight time on these is not very long but they're a great uh, beginning quadcopter for people that want to get into flying quadcopters a very low price great for children and as you can see here, uh, they're very easy to understand and how to use. You've got all your controllers here. You've got your little sticks here and also your trim uh, buttons and your power button and stuff like that. Very easy to understand. It's all written in uh, the user manual to tell you how to uh, pair these with the actual drone itself. We've got a couple of buttons at the top here. And uh, also on the back, we've got our battery bay here, which is for your controller. We do have a bunch of other stuff here, which is your propeller blade guards here to stop you damage them. Also, you get your charging cable, a screwdriver, and uh, some other bits and pieces, your landing uh, feet here as well. And also we do have extra uh, blades in case you break uh, one of these or two of them, which you're probably gonna do when you first start flying one of these. And uh, you've got your camera here, which it just attaches to the actual drone itself. You can fly it without this if you wish or you can fly it with it on, it's entirely up to you. You don't even have to put the guards or the landing feet on if you don't want to, as you'll see, which I did in this video. Now this is very lightweight, so it's not gonna be for uh, windy areas or wind, uh, gusty uh, areas because it will uh, fly off, you will probably lose it. So it's very lightweight, so be very careful if you're flying it outdoors on a windy day. But other than that, it's a very simple drone to fly. I'm, I'm going to show you flying indoors. We've got some LED lights on the bottom here, which will show you which way is the correct way that is traveling, the front and back. Also, you've got your power button here and also your charging port there as well. Now, the battery bay is hidden at the back here. You just pull this open and slot that in. Make sure it's plugged in and away you go. You'll get a bit of flight time on here. So buy a bunch of these batteries and you can be flying this for a a fair bit of time uh, at one go you know so I'm going to turn this on now and then we're just going to uh, sync it up with the uh, controller so I've got the batteries in the controller here just need to click this into place and then turn this on and I just need to pull the uh, levers down uh, to the bottom here and then that will pair those together and we should now be synced uh, with the drone itself you can see it's now starting to rotate I'll take it down into the living room and give it a little flight for you as you can see here very easy to fly and very easy to do once you get the trimming buttons right uh, I never spent too much time trimming it but once you get it trimmed it really is stable and really easy to fly you can do 360 loops also head free mode and stuff like that so it's pretty cool uh, and this sort of price point it's not too bad and it's very affordable uh, for people that want to get into flying quadcopters now of course you can fly outdoors in the summer it will be ideal for outdoors but again just watch it in those windy conditions Next up, we've got the Datafrog X9 5-inch handheld gaming console with 500 plus games, 29 pounds English pounds that is. It's a bit of a PSP knockoff as you can see here. Got everything inside the box which I'm going to show you here. This is your user manual, tells you how to set it up and uh, pretty much uh, use it and you just turn it on and it's ready to go. It's all pre-done, you've got all your uh, retro games on here as well. You can also add more games to it. You've got your little charging uh, plug here. And there's another one here which is for probably Europe or across the pond. And you can see here we've got a pair of headphones. Not sure how good these are, never tested them, but they're probably not that great to be honest with you. And uh, you've got another uh, charging cable here for your device itself. Now this is the X9 as you can see here, got your buttons here, bit of a PSP lookalike. You've got your volume button here, your select and start. Also a bunch of other navigation buttons here which you can use to play games with. You've got your two buttons on top here. Also you've got that jack which is for your, if you want to put uh, speakers on here or anything like that or you want to go into headphones or something like that you can use that there. You've got your charging port there. On and off TF card where you can put uh, your own TF card in here. The camera's not much to write home about but what do you expect for this sort of price. 
but it's on there if you need it. You've got your uh, headphone jack and also TV out as well. Now you've got a bunch of presets on here as well, which you can go straight into like Metal Slug, uh, Fat Fury 2 and all that sort of good stuff. If you just want to go into those, you can do. And you've got a bunch of other stuff like uh, uh, Geo, Neo Geo and also arcade games and other NES games as well, SNES games on there. Now this game is uh, another game you can play on here. I'm just going to go through some games. I'm not going to go through loads of them. We'll just go through here. And I'm holding the uh, screen at a different angle here, so you're not getting the true reflection of the good color screen that I'm getting here. It's a pretty decent color screen that you're getting uh, for this particular device. Play movies on here as well if you want to, and music. So you can use it for video music, just about anything you want really. Uh, so you can play all those on here as well. We'll just go through and I'll play a couple of more games so you can see them. So you go into this sort of menu system here and go into the DIR list. You can see this, there's one of 8,400 on here. There's not 8,400 games. There's over 500 plus games on here. So there's plenty of games to play on here. I'm not going to go through the whole list of them because they are listed like this when you go into the actual menu. Uh, but if you play the preset ones on the screen, uh, they're fine. Now this is a demo here. I'm not playing this. You can see here, I'm just going to insert credits if I want to do. Just push the start button and it will start to play. Uh, but you've got bowling. Plenty of old retro games here. If you remember the old retro games uh, from the arcades and from the chip shop when you used to be in your school dinner time, you used to go down and play. You've got wrestling games. Neo Geo played some really good fighting games back then. Uh, but they've got a lot of Neo Geo stuff on here and uh, uh, snares and stuff like that. So we've got Mario, plenty of other ones on here. Very playable as well, very easy to do. Got nice uh, volume on here as well. So I can imagine this being very useful on the plane for long haul flights and stuff like that, very useful. So let's move on to the next product. This is the Brainwaves. Headphones, these are HM5 stereo monitor headphones. They're £89, very expensive headphones. But you can see here is all the specs on the side of the box. You can pause the screen and go through these as you wish. So moving on to the back of the box, as you can see, we've got the specifications here. And uh, these do have uh, 42 millimeter uh, dynamic uh, drivers in here. Also rated at, at 64 ohms. And the frequency range is 10 hertz to 26 hertz. As you can see here, this is the actual uh, package here. It comes in a nice carry case, uh, which is uh, pretty nice. They seem to put a lot of effort into the uh, branding and also the carry case here, uh, because obviously these are premium headphones at £89. And this is a very competitive market at this sort of price point, because there's some very good headphones at this price point. As you can see, you've got your user manual, and you can buy uh, extra ear cups for different colours and stuff like that. Uh, but you get these on Amazon as well and got a couple of spare ear cups here if you need them and these are very comfortable headphones I must say they're pretty comfortable and uh, we're going to take a look at these in more detail so let's get this uh, out these are the actual headphones they're very lightweight and a bit plasticky you can see gold uh, cat uh, ends here that's a quarter inch uh, jack on there with uh, two 3.5 mil jack on there as well and you can see here We've got two 3.5 mil jacks on that end and also another 3.5 mil jack for your phones and stuff like that. If you want to plug it into there, you can plug it into your phone or whatever takes a 3.5 mil jack in there. Now these headphones are very lightweight. I do like the design of them, uh, but there's a little bit too much plastic for my liking. And uh, at this sort of price point, it's a very competitive area uh, because you've got some big branded names out there at £90, which are going to be you know right on the heels of these or surpassing these and you can see you've got a bit of padding up here you can extend the sides here which you can do on most headphones but the they do feel a bit plasticky around this uh, hinge area here and they only rotate one way here you've got your 3.5 mil port there for your jacks and they are on both sides here and uh, i'm just hoping the sound quality is going to be uh, okay on these and i've played these already so no rotation that way so I'm going to give these a sound test and I'll let you know uh, what they sound like. But they do feel very comfortable when they're on. Um, so I just want to give these a quick sound test and I'll let you know uh, what the sound quality is like.
So what do I actually think of these headphones? Well, they sound pretty good, uh, but they're not the best headphones out there at this sort of price point. Now at this price point, you can get better quality headphones, better name brand headphones, and also uh, better build quality and better sound quality for that sort of price. So maybe they should consider bringing the price down on these because I do think they're a little bit plasticky for my liking and 90 pound is a little bit too strong for my liking. Anyway, that's just my opinion. So let's move on to the next uh, product review. We've got the mount holder here. This is a magnetic car air vent holder. This is for your mobile phones. It slots into your car air vent and you can just phone to this magnetic holder. It's pretty straightforward. So you've got your attachments here for your phone and stuff like that. If you need to use these, you can do. Uh, and all you need to do is just slot this into your car air vent and uh, that's basically it. Your phone will just be able to mount straight onto this uh, metal sort of uh, magnet and it's a pretty good build quality and I will leave the link in the video description if you're interested. Very quick video review on that product. Now next up we've got uh, the Textic Mini Projector. Now this is a pretty expensive item. This is a £200 item. It's been reduced down from £300 and uh, it's a portable uh, projector as you can see here 1080p very small and lightweight so you're going to be using this uh, just out and about if you want to use it at camping and stuff like that you just find yourself a wall and project your images on there so you get some very good quality on here uh, it does look very nice i do like the look and the design for this here so you can see the design does look pretty good and it's very small it's not very uh, a large sort of uh, projector, so it's very small and lightweight. You've got your TF card here, which you can put all your movies and stuff on, your reset here, USB. Also, uh, you've got your DC 5 volts input. You've got your headphones and also your HDMI and your power button. You've got your mounting uh, port on the bottom here where you're going to mount this. And also you have your uh, manual focusing uh, switch on the side. Now you do see here, this is the model C800S. Battery capacity is 4200 milliamp hours. Now this is the uh, user manual here, all color, as you can see here, as you'd expect at this sort of price point. You've got your remote control, which will control the projector and your on-screen display. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to do. Also, you've got your USB uh, cable here. And also you've got your power lead as well. So you can power it and you can run on battery. You've got a little tripod here. If you want to use a little tripod, you can just put it straight onto the uh, projector and away you go. Now the flickering on the screen is from my camera because I was shooting at 50 hertz and that's why you're getting that flicker. But this is what you're going to get. It's really crystal clear. And my camera just does not do the picture justice, but it's very good quality picture. You can see here we've got a bunch of uh, icons here, Netflix, Play Store, uh, you've got also Kodi on here, which is your RKMC, so just a fork of Kodi, VLC, and a bunch of other stuff on here, YouTube. Now, what else can you do with this? You can play games on it, you can stream content down on Kodi, or you can stream content on Netflix, or whatever it is you want to do, YouTube. You can set it up to do whatever you like, play movies from your pen drive. Uh, you can connect to uh, Wi-Fi uh, through this as well. You get 1080p on here the screen quality or the quality of the picture is very very clear and sharp you get a bit of flicker there and that is uh, due to my camera uh, but it is pretty decent the quality of picture now if you've got a big uh, event coming up or something like that or you want to show some movies in the garden on the wall you can do uh, and stuff like that so it's pretty good for that sort of thing now the sound quality is not the best and also this annoying little uh, box kept popping up when I was streaming on YouTube, just like it's doing now. Uh, every time I was streaming a video, that kept popping up on the screen. I had to keep pushing play, which was very annoying. But other than that, it's pretty decent. You can plug in an external speaker as well. But anyway, but that's about it for this video. I'm going to wrap this one up. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys, and thanks for your continued support. I'll leave all the links in the video description if you are interested. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.